Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 16, the computation of the slope of a non-vertical line. Okay, so the classwork example one says, using what you learned in the last lesson, determine the slope of the line with the following graph. So what we learned in the last lesson was, find a location on the graph where this line goes through a corner of the grid and that is where there is an integer value. So if I pick this point here, that is the point two comma one, where two and one are both integers. If I chose this point right here, that would be X value and it would be an approximation of two and maybe a third comma two. So that's not an integer. So we want integers for the X and Y value and the only place that occurs is at the corners of the grids. So this is the point two one. So if I continue up, that's not a corner. That's not a corner. This is on a corner right here. So there's my two points. And from the last lesson, if we could find the horizontal distance between these two points as being a distance of one, which is what this is, then all we have to do is find the rise and putting it over run, which is one, is the same answer. So my slope in this problem is m equals three. Three over one is just three. So that was a review from the last lesson. So moving on to example two, it says using what you learned in the last lesson, determine the slope of the line with the following graph. So again, I'm going to find where it's crossing right on a corner, which is here, not here, here. So with that said, then now I know that the distance from here to here is one. And then the rise is up two. So two over one or simply the slope equals two. Okay, example three. What is the difference about the, this line compared to the last two examples? Okay, so what they're asking is what the difference of the last two is. Well, if I put a dot there, that's right on the corner. I move over, not on the corner, not on the corner, not on the corner. Finally, I get over here. The difference between the last two problems and this one is I had to go over three before I got to the next integer value for my x and then going up two and now I have how far I moved and actually since I had to go over three we generally do rise over run so I would move this rise I'd do rise first and run second so either way you do it you're going to end up at the same location but if we read it as rise over run so m equals rise over run then my slope is my rise, which is two, and my run, which is three. So my slope is two thirds. So in this case, I had a fraction for an answer for my slope. When my unit for my x value change was one in the last two problems, then I get an integer for my slope. And that's the difference. Okay, in this first exercise, it says, let's investigate concretely to see if the claim that we can find slope between any two points is true. So part A says to select any two points on the line to label as P and R. So obviously I'm going to try to make this easier by not picking values that are not integers because I can't just estimate that as being a half. It may not be one half. Okay, so I'm going to choose this point right here and I'll call it P. And I will choose the next integer value right here as R. So select any two points on the line and label as P and R. So that's what A asked me to do, so there we go. B says to identify the coordinates of points P and R. So P is where we started our origin and we have to go left one, two, three, four and then down one, two, three to get to P. So P is negative four comma negative three, left four down three. R, R is the point negative one, negative two, negative three, negative one. 
negative 3, negative 1. Now it says, part C says, find the slope of the line using as many different points as you can. Identify your points and show your work below. So in order to find slope, I will say M equals rise over run. But in this case, we don't want to just count up and over. We're using our points. So let me not, let's not use rise over run in this scenario. So we're, we're moving on to a different concept. And if we are given values like so, we don't need a graph to determine what the slope of the line is. If we have two points, we can find the slope by calculating. So what we're going to do is try to determine how we, do, how we know what our slope is. So before, when we were doing rise over run, this is an increase of 2 on the x-axis and or y-axis, and this is an increase of 1 on the x-axis. So we went up 2, right 1. So our slope is rise over run or up 2 over 1, but now I'm trying to explain to you how we come up with that with points. So what did we do here? So if this is point P and it is negative 4, comma, negative 3, and my r is the point negative 3 comma negative 1, then how am I getting 2 from this? Well, if you look at the y values, this rise here is a change on the y-axis. It is an increase of 2 on the y-axis. So from point 3, my y value went from negative 3, my y value went from negative 3 to negative 1. So if we take and call this p sub 1 and this p 2 and if we continue with that and this is the point r and it's the first value in the point r and this is the second value in the point r so we have p1 p2 r1 r2 so how did i get 2 here well, I had to um, calculate a change, so it's subtraction. So if I take negative 1 minus, so if I take my second point, and I'm, when I'm reading left to right, P is my first point I arrive at. So if I'm moving from the right, so as I go to the right, as I'm going this direction, I'm increasing and going to the right, I end up at this point first and I end up at this point second. So we're going to take this point R and subtract P from it. So the slope is going to be my R2 minus my P2 divided by my R1 minus my R or my P1. Okay? So in other words, we want to determine the difference between this and this. It's subtraction. How far apart are they? Negative 3, so I would say R2, R2 is right here, is negative 1. And I'm going to subtract P2, which is negative 3. So negative 1 minus a negative 3 over my R1, this point here, negative 3. And I'm going to subtract my uh, P1, the point here. P1 is negative 4. So if I take negative 1 minus a negative 3, that's negative 1 plus 3 over a negative 3 minus a negative 4 or plus 4. And negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and that's this number here. And the negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So that's this 1. Okay, so my slope is 2. And we're going to be doing this more and more, and it might be a little confusing at first, uh, but we will get to the point where this actually becomes quite simple. Okay, so I wanted to explain how to find the slope using as many different points as you can now. Now they want us to pick more points and show your work below. Okay, so other points we could have chosen were, I'll just do one more. I could have chosen this point here, and this point here okay two consecutive integers on that line this is the point negative one comma 
3, and this is the point 0, comma, 5. So if I do my slope as, and if I call this one P now, and this one R, then I'm going to take R2 minus P2 over R1 minus P1. So my R2 is 5 minus my R or P2, which is 3, divided by my R1. This is my R point. First position is 0 minus my first position, P1, minus a negative 1. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 0 minus a negative 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1. And as you can see, we got the same slope of 2 at here as we did down here. Okay. Okay. So this um, curriculum... This was a new way of presenting it for me. I'm going to show you the standard way as well because eventually if you end up at a school that is not using Common Core um, and you see, you don't see this. What you would see was this here. So I'm going to do this again with the same points and explain to you what they mean. So what we do is we're taking our Y values and we're going to call this our Y value from the second point. So we call it Y2 and we're going to take our Y value from the first point and subtract it and it's Y1. And then we're going to divide by X2. This is point 0.2. Think of it as point 0.2 and it's the X value of point 0.2 minus the X value of point 0.1. Okay, so we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I take the y value of the second, it's 5. I take the y value of the first, it's 3, and I subtract. I take the x value, this is an x. I take the x value of the second point, which is 0, and the x value of the first point, which is negative 1, and I subtract. So 5 minus 3 is 2, and 0 minus negative 1 is 0 plus 1, which is 1, and we will still get the same slope. Now, there's one other way I want to mention this, and it is change. How much did it y change? So it's change in y divided by the change in x. So when we want to know how much something changes, we subtract the smaller from the bigger, or in this case, the left from the right. And so we have change in y, change in x, which is the same, this here, means the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which means the same thing as the second position of r minus the second position of p over the second position of our first position of r minus the first position of p. Okay, so those are the three possible ways. Those are three possible ways. They're not the three possible ways. There's more, but these are three possible ways of finding slope. Okay, and this one here is new to me in this curriculum. So either way, we're going to be using both of these more frequently, and then eventually we'll be leading up to this in higher level math courses. Okay, that is the end of lesson 16. Review this lesson summary and go do your problem set.